Good morning. Uh, welcome to Board of Adjustment for the Town of Estes Park, Tuesday, May 2nd, 9.02 a.m. Uh, first item is uh, we need to vote on the agenda approval. Do I get a motion? <clears throat> oh, hang on a minute. Let me introduce people. Um, to my left is uh, Wayne Newsom, Vice Chair. I'm uh, Chair Jeff Moreau. We have Recording Secretary Karen Swanlin, Town Attorney Dan Kramer, Community Development Director Jessica Gardner, and Planner One, Carol Washam, okay, and uh, Senior Planner Jeff Warber. Um, first item is to uh, approve the agenda. Can I get a motion on that, please? I move the agenda be approved. Um, can I get your vote? Yes. Okay. Vote working? No, no vote working. We have high approve. High approve. Okay, that's um, unanimous. Uh, next item is uh, public comment. Is there anybody that would like to make a comment before the board today that is not on our published agenda? Hearing none, uh, our consent agenda, which uh, entails the board of adjustment. Chair Murrow, there is actually somebody. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can you come up to the podium, please? Uh, for only something that is not on the published agenda. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so consent agenda, Board of Adjustment minutes dated April 4th, 2023. Um, do you need to change anything? Have you had a chance to review that? All right. I move that we approve the minutes from last meeting, April 4th. I approve. Yeah, I approve. Um, that passed unanimously. Next item is uh, action items, a variance request for 1895 Fall River Road. Uh, Senior Planner Warber uh, will be giving us a report. There are two variance requests to increase allowable square footage for employee housing. Jeff Wobert, uh, Town of Estes Park Planning. Uh, this is uh, an application for a variance request for the total square footage and cumulative square footage for proposed employee housing at 1895 Fall River Road. Uh, it's located in a CEO commercial outlying zone district. Um, Kinley Built LLC is the owner applicant and the representatives are Trail Ridge Consulting and Basis Architecture. Um, I believe Mr. Kinley's here. Um, I don't think he has a presentation, but he's here uh, available for, for uh, clarification and, and comments. Um, now, uh, one thing I would like to uh, kind of start out with is the, uh, the employee housing versus workforce housing. There was some questions um, raised, uh, the difference between those. The employee housing is accessory to uh, an existing use in most of our non-residential zoning, for example, in this case, it's a uh, commercial office. Um, they can have a, as accessory employee housing. Uh, a lot of our accommodations, lodging folks in the accommodations zoning um, can set up employee housing as accessory, um, which is somewhat different from uh, workforce housing. Workforce housing is covered in uh, chapter 11 of our code, and that's specific to RM multifamily zoning. Um, it, it provides incent incentives and density bonus for uh, for the RM for multifamily. The uh, the base density is eight units per acre. They can actually get up to double that to 16. There's also a height incentive um, available that they can go from the the maximum 30 up to 38 feet uh, for workforce housing if they're providing it as workforce or attainable housing, uh, which more easily gets them up to three stories. Um, both of these uh, require deed restrictions, um, and the way we've approached that in my time here has been uh, restrictive covenant agreements, we call them. Those are processed and approved by the town and then uh, recorded, and then the, uh, those are administered actually by our housing authority who keeps tabs on, on uh, ensuring that the, uh, the units are occupied by workforce um, or employee housing, which 
basically boils down to having uh, documentation that you have a job in the Estes Valley or the Estes uh, School District boundaries. Um, so this, of course, is the employee housing, 1895 Fall River Road. Uh, it's located uh, about three quarters of a mile west of um, the intersection of Wonderview and Elkhorn. As I said, it's zone CO, outlying commercial. Uh, the adjacent properties um, to the east and, and to the north and the west are actually in unincorporated Larimer counties. The uses established there are residential and there's also some accommodations, lodging. Uh, and then in the town, um, zoning to the south and the southwest, there's, there's also uh, residential and some accommodations uses. There's a little bit of uh, CO uh, commercial zoning in town um, a few hundred feet to the south. So specifically for the variance, uh, as I said, it's accessory. That's covered in uh, section 5.2 of the Estes Park Development Code. Um, and there's limitations on employee housing. One of the limitations is that each employee housing unit is not to exceed 800 square feet, gross floor area. Uh, the variance they're requesting, um, one piece of that is that they want to um, set up, establish eight two bedroom employee housing uh, apartments that are each 1,200 square feet. Um, along those same lines, the, uh, there's a, a restriction on square footage for the total square footage of employee housing. Um, in this case, they have um, commercial office use uh, with the existing commercial office and what they're proposing to add, they would get up to uh, 9,680 square feet. Uh, so the way the code is set up, they should not be able to exceed that square footage with the total square footage of the employee housing. However, they are proposing a variance to be able to go 1,210 square feet over that. Um, so that's the specific uh, variance requests. This, uh, this isn't real legible. It's a site plan from the development plan. Uh, that's that's part of this uh, process. Um, over here uh, to the west, you can see the existing structure, and then there's there's quite a bit of a, uh, existing parking area, and then the proposed employee housing would be up here on the kind of the north central uh, portion of the site. Uh, Mr. Lane from Basis has uh, given us some nice elevation drawings. You can see that there's a significant slope in this middle. Um, that, that's uh, gonna be somewhat of a challenge, but of course this is Estes Park, so it's, uh, it's nothing that's out of the ordinary to build these on a slope, a sloped area. Um, and again, this is just for informational purposes. Uh, the, the variance is just for the square footage, not for the location, uh, height, or, or design of the structures. Site photograph. Um, so this, this uh, photograph shows the existing structure over here and the existing access and parking, and then over here kind of uh, on the north uh, is the slope where they would be establishing the, the employee housing units. Now the standards for review, um, I've spelled them all out here. Uh, as the board is aware, uh, this is kind of the nuts and bolts of a variance approval. Um, the, uh, the board is to uh, Variance shall demonstrate compliance with the applic applicable standards and criteria um, in order to approve a variance. So I like to go over uh, each one of these in, in some detail. Uh, the first is that special circumstances or conditions exist. Uh, typically we look at uh, exceptional topographic conditions, narrowness, shallowness, or the shape of the property that are not common to other areas or buildings similarly situated and practical difficulty may result from strict compliance with this code standards provided that the requested variance will not have the effect of nullifying or impairing the intent and purposes of either the specific standards, this code, or the comprehensive plan. The staff finding for this uh, first uh, criteria is the uh, special circumstances exist, although not with the physical condition of the property. Employers in Estes Park and Estes Valley have long faced serious challenges in hiring and retaining employees due to the lack of housing in the Estes Park area. The eight proposed employee housing units can alleviate these circumstances somewhat. The requested variance will not nullify or impair the intent and purposes of the employees, employee housing standards, the Estes Park Development Code, or the comprehensive plan. 
Uh, the second is in determining practical difficulty, the board shall consider the following factors. Uh, A, whether there can be any beneficial use of the property without the variance. Staff finding is there may be beneficial use of the property without the variance. B, whether the variance is substantial. Staff finding the variance to exceed 800 square feet uh, to 1,200 square feet is 50% more than allowed. The variance to allow the employee housing to exceed the commercial square footage by 1,210 square feet is somewhat substantial, 14% greater than what's allowed. The two bedroom, two bathroom apartments are more desirable and provide more flexibility than what is possible with the 800 square foot limitation, according to the applicant. C, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered or whether adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance. Staff finding is the character of the neighborhood would not be substantially altered. There would be minor impacts to this area with employee housing units being larger than allowable. However, adjoining properties would not suffer a substantial detriment if the variance is approved. Parking is adequate for the proposed uses. D, whether the variance would adversely affect the delivery of public services such as water and sewer. Uh, staff finding public services such as water and sewer will not be adversely affected by the variance. E, whether the applicant purchased the property with knowledge of the requirement. The staff finding is the applicant was aware of the employee housing size requirements when the property was purchased. And F, whether the applicant's predicament can be mitigated through some method other than a variance. Staff finding, the applicant could add employee housing that is smaller and meets the square footage requirements of the code. There is no method other than the variance to establish the employee housing at the size that is proposed. Number three, no variance shall be granted if the submitted conditions or circumstances affecting the applicant's property are of so general or recurrent a nature as to make reasonably practicable the formulation of a general regulation for such conditions or situations. Staff finding is the conditions affecting the applicant's property are not general or recurrent. Number four, no variance shall be granted reducing the size of lots containing contained in an existing or proposed subdivision, etc. cetera. Um, this one's not applicable. Um, number five, if authorized, a variance shall represent the least deviation from the regulations that will afford relief. Staff finding is the proposed variance would be the least deviation from the code regulations. Number six, under no circumstances shall the board grant a variance to allow a use not permitted. Um, the proposed variance, as I said earlier, is a use permitted as an accessory use in CO zoning. And lastly, in granting such variances, the board may require conditions and staff is not recommending conditions for this variance. Uh, review agency comments were pretty minimal. Um, Upper Thompson has no concerns. Public Works supports approval of the variances and the Town of Estes Park Utilities has no objections. Now I should uh, mention that with the development plan, um, it's safe to say that there's gonna be significantly more uh, detailed technical comments and requirements um, from the review agencies. But for the square footage variance, um, they didn't have a lot. Uh, to say, as far as um, uh, neighborhood uh, comment or input, uh, public comment, um, I hadn't had any when I wrote the staff report. I have had in the last uh, uh, few days, I've had some, um, some general questions. Uh, people have called and asked some questions, um, just uh, general questions about the project. Uh, there's one, one adjacent owner that has some, uh, some concerns with possible outdoor lighting um, with the new project and, uh, and the, water, the water line, extending water service to the new um, uh, employee housing units. Um, those will definitely be covered in, uh, in detail with the uh, development plan. They're not really applicable to the, uh, to the square footage variance, but uh, certainly something that we're going to uh, consider. And I've forwarded those comments on um, to the owner applicant and the representatives. Uh, other than that, I, I haven't heard any opposition to the project or the variance. So finally, staff does recommend approval of the variance application. Uh, advantage is approval of the variance will allow 
development of more and larger employee housing units, which is needed in the Estes Park area. The disadvantage, there may be a slight increase in traffic on Fall River Road uh, when the employee housing is fully occupied. And uh, I think that covers it. Um, I can answer questions. I think Mr. Kinley is here. Um, thank you. I have a question about uh, number five. Um, if authorized the variance shall represent the least deviation from regulations that will afford relief, and you said the staff findings um, that the proposed variance would be the least deviation from the EPDC regulations. Um, could you elaborate on that a little bit, how, what staff came up with with that? And why? Well, I think what that gets at is if there's any other way to, to uh, move forward with this project as proposed um, without getting approval of a variance. And as I said uh, in one of the other um, criteria that uh, uh, really they could move forward and just decrease the square footage mm -hmm. and go with the 800 square feet and the cumulative total too. Mm -hmm. But if they wanna, um, there's really nothing other than a variance that I see that they could get by with and, and do this. Okay. So I'd say it's the least deviation from the okay. code. I understand, thank you. Yeah. Anything? All right. Question. Thank you. All right. Any representative uh, or appli applicant like to make a comment? Okay. Uh, anybody in the audience um, like to make a comment? Nobody. Okay. Um, anything you want to ask of anybody, Wayne? <laughs> No, I have no comment other than <clears throat> I think it's uh, not unreasonable to increase that from 800 to 1,200 square feet. You know, uh, 800 square foot uh, living accommodation is pretty small. So I think it's more reasonable to have uh, what they're proposing, two bedrooms, you know, two baths. And looking at the project, too, I think the way that it's located, uh, I can't see it be a any uh, bad thing for any of the neighbors over there. This lighting thing you know, could be, but that's going to be taken care of. That would be okay, but uh, it's really going to kind of be out of sight back up on the hill for traffic up and down 34. So, no, I think it's a good idea. Okay. Uh, anybody in the audience want to make a comment now? Okay, hearing none, then I move that the Board of Adjustment approve the variance request in accordance with the findings as presented. Um, could I get a second on that? And I second that motion. All right, uh, can I get your vote, please? It's not working. Okay. Uh, I approve. I approve. All right, that passed unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. A next item, uh, variance request 160 South St. Brain. Uh, this is plan on planner uh, one Washam. This is a request for 16.4 foot and 6.9 foot setbacks, front setbacks in lieu of 25 feet required. Good morning, I'm Kara Washam. I'm at planner one with the town of Estes Park. Um, I have two um, setback variances to present today. I'll start with LMX Cal. Mm -hmm. Here's a vicinity map of the subject area. Um, it's just south of First Street and just east of South St. Brain Avenue or Highway 7. The surrounding area is CO, commercial outlining, or outlying, and to the west we have accommodations, and to the south we have R2. Um, here are a few key points. The property is known as El Mexcal Family Restaurant and is owned by Epco Properties, LLC. Um, it's at 161st Street um, and is located in the CO District. It's at the northern end of a large commercial center. Um, the applicant requests approval of a revised variance to allow a reduced front setback of 6.9 feet along 1st Street and reduced arterial road setback of 16.4 feet along South St. Brain, um, Highway 7. The applicant requested a similar variance for reduced setbacks in 2022 and received approval on January 3rd of this year with conditions to remove all four parking spaces and install bollards. Um, the applicant is proposing to eliminate parking, parking spaces on the northwest side 
to construct a deck for outdoor seating. Um, this use is permitted by right in the CO zoning district. Um, so I provided this table to show a little bit of clarity on what's being asked here since this is a, um, a revised, essentially a revised variance request from back in January. So originally they asked for um, an 8.3 um, variance for the front setback in lieu of the 15 feet required per code. Um, they are now asking for 6.9 feet. So that's um, an additional amount reduced by 1.4 or a total um, reduction of 8.1 feet. And then along the arterial road, um, they originally asked for 22.5 and they are now asking for 16.4 feet. So that's an additional 6.1 feet um, and a total of 8.6 feet from the 25 feet that's required per code. <clears throat> um, here's the site plan that the applicant submitted. Here's a blow up of the um, variance. So it's very similar to the one before. Um, the proposed deck has changed slightly. The northwest corner of it kind of goes at an angle now. Um, I believe the intention is to get as close as possible to that site visibility triangle to um, allow additional seating. And also want to point out that um, the existing setback of 25 feet, or the per code, um, is not where that front of the building is. It's significantly less than that. So this request of 16.4 feet is moderately substantial to the 25 feet, but it still um, is not as close to that sidewalk as the building already is. Here's a picture of the front where those four parking spaces are. <coughs> this is from um, First Street. And here's a, a side picture from South St. Brain. Um, so for the standards for review, we had a few criteria of note that I wanted to point out. Um, special conditions exist um, because of the location of those four parking spaces. Eliminating these could provide a safety benefit to the community as vehicles currently have to back up onto First Street. Um, this criteria was similar in the, the first request we received um, back in 2022. Um, and then review criteria 2 point B, the variance for the front setback is substantial due to the proposed setback being just over half of what is required by code. Um, the variance for the arterial road setback is minor when compared to the existing setback between the arterial, arterial road and the face of the building. Um, the mixed character, mixed use character of the neighborhood would not be altered, nor would adjoining properties suffer a substantial detriment as a result of variance. Um, and also I want to point out that the proposed use for outdoor seating and food service is permitted by right in the CO zoning district. Um, so we sent this out to our referral agencies for review and Public Works had a few comments. Um, they requested additional information pertaining to how intersection visibility would be maintained. Um, it was suggested to use landscaping design features to prevent temporary encroachment in the site visibility triangle. The applicant resubmitted documents and provided a sketch of a planter in the subject area, as you can see on the right there. Um, planning staff and public works staff find this proposal to be acceptable, and there were no other agent or no other agencies had concerns or comments. Staff <coughs> recommends approval of the request. Um, I included some advantages here that you'll also see in your staff report. Um, the only disadvantage would be it would eliminate parking spaces. However, um, an informal traffic study done by Van Horn suggests that existing parking will remain sufficient. <coughs> and that's all I have on this one. Um, I'm available for questions, and I believe the applicant or representative is available too. Do you have any questions? I have no question. Okay. I don't either, thank you. Okay. Applicant or uh, representative want to make any comments? Okay. Uh, <coughs> anybody in the audience want to make any comments? Okay, hearing none. Uh, I move that we uh, approve this variance based on uh, staff recommendations. Can I, nice. I second it. All right. Can I have your vote? I approve. I approve. Will that pass unanimously? Next item is a variance request for 281 West Riverside Drive. Again, Planner Washam. Eliminate front and side setback in lieu of eight feet and ten feet required. Okay, this is Bogey's Bar setback variance. Here's the vicinity map. Um, it's located between Moraine Avenue and West Riverside Drive, um, just slightly south of downtown. Um, all neighboring properties are zoned CD, commercial downtown. Here are some key points. The property is known as Bogey's Bar and is owned by Terry Bogener. 
Um, it's a small parcel at um, 0 0.07 acres and is approximately 55 feet wide and 60 feet deep. The address is 281 West Riverside Drive. It was previously 281 Marine Avenue. Um, I believe it was readdressed in October of 2022. Um, the lot has double frontage along Marine Avenue and West Riverside Drive. The applicant requests approval of a variance to eliminate the front setback along Marine Avenue and the side setback along the north property line in lieu of the eight feet and 10 feet respective um, setbacks required for, um, per the Estes Park Development Code. The applicant is proposing to construct a bar with food service and outdoor seating by utilizing prefabricated shipping containers. Um, the site plan shows mezzanine access off Moraine Avenue and patio access from West Riverside Drive. Um, both of these uses are permitted by right in the CD zoning district per table 4-4. Um, the subject property was previously a residence. There was a small cabin there and it was demolished after the lot was purchased by the applicant in 2022. Um, permit number 22-EP-00434 was issued for demolition and was completed in October of 2022. Um, here's a photo of the subject property prior to demolition. Um, here's a photo of it now. Uh, this is facing west off of West Riverside Drive. And here's another photo of it um, facing east off of Moraine Avenue. Um, so the Estes Park Development Code requires setbacks to be measured from the platted lot lines. The deeded property lines of this parcel differ from the platted lot lines. Um, if you see the, the yellow lines there, that shows the platted lines. Um, this was platted in 1907. We don't have any record of the, the plat being amended since then. Um, the line just above to the right shows the um, deeded property line. So the applicant requests a zero side setback along the north property line. Um, however, they maintain ownership, the applicant maintains ownership of approximately four feet of the platted lot to the north. Um, if you can see that yellow line in the red line on the north side of it, that shows that four feet. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also reflected in the legal description. <clears throat> Here's a conceptual sketch of the shipping container bar. Um, but I do want to point out, if the proposed variance request is granted, the applicant will be required to apply for building permits. Um, the site plan and shipping container plans will be referred to review agencies for comments as part of the standard review process. So this is just conceptual for now. If you look at the left where that little opening is, um, that's where it's proposed to be lined up um, against Marine Avenue to have access to that sidewalk there. Um, I wanted to point out um, Table 4-4 um, to help confirm that these uses, um, the bar and the and with outdoor seating and food service are both permitted by right in the CD district. Um, I also wanted to provide some clarity on setback applicability. Table 4-4 under section 4.4, which I'll show in the next slide, um, states that the 10 foot minimum side setback only applies if the lot abuts a single family residential property whose use at the time of the subject application is residential. Um, the property to the south of the subject property at 286 Marine Avenue is used as a short-term vacation rental um, and is considered a commercial use. The zero side setback along the south property line is permitted by right and is not subject to this variance request. The property to the north currently has a pending vacation home license application under review at the town clerk's office. Um, this setback is subject to this variance request. And here's the, the table from 4-5. Um, I highlighted where it states, if a lot abuts a single family residential property, um, it has to be 10 feet, all other cases zero. Um, and then the little note 11 there um, states that for purposes of these cells, the term single family residential property means any properties whose use, whether occupied or vacant, is um, in accord with 13.3.92 of this code. At the time, the relevant billing permits are issued for development of the subject CD zone property. Um, providing that the building permits entail a change in setback distance. Um, here's some standards of review um, of note. So special conditions exist with that retaining wall on the west side um, along Marine Avenue. It has approximately a 10 to 12 foot vertical drop in elevation. Um, by allowing a zero foot front setback, the bar can be positioned near the retaining wall and directly accessed from the sidewalk. Um, there may be beneficial use of the property without the variance, but a site plan would need to be redesigned and it would decrease usable concrete patio space. Um, the request is moderately substantial. Side setbacks of zero feet are typical in the CD zoning district and are permitted by right with exception to properties that abut a single family residential use. Um, 
the CD character of the na immediate neighborhood would not be altered, um, nor would adjoining properties suffer a substantial detriment as a result of variance. Um, the proposed use is permitted and exists in the subject vicinity. Um, zero site setbacks appear to be consistent with nearby businesses. Um, it appears that Snowy Peaks Winery is at around a zero site setback. Um, in the applicant requests a setback variance in order to construct a bar food service. And again, I want to point out that these uses are permitted by right in the CD zoning district. Staff recommends approval with conditions of the proposed variance request. Um, we received three written comments. Um, they, were, they were included in the staff report. Staff recommends conditions of approval. If the variance request is granted, staff would like to condition the owner to provide a privacy fence between both properties to the north and south for noise and security screening and a condition to screen all garbage receptacles. Um, point out a few advantages. Um, there are no known disadvantages of the variance request. And that's all I have for this one. I'm available for questions, and the applicant is here as well to answer any questions. Any questions, Wayne? No, no question. <clears throat> uh, applicant would like to make a comment? A representative? Rest. Can you state your name and address, please? Okay, my name's Carolyn Newberry, uh, 311 Virginia Drive here in Estes Park. My husband and I are partners uh, in this endeavor. Terry Bodner, same address, 311 Virginia Drive. Um, we uh, very much were going, we're going to provide privacy fence on the north and south. Uh, of course, <clears throat> the garbage receptacle that's a given. We want to I mean, we want to want it to look as good as possible, and we will do that. Um, really, I think yeah. We're just. If you have any other questions, just call us, and we're here. Or we're, we're here now to answer any questions because okay. we're here to provide whatever is needed. Um, you know, trying to color within the lines, if you speak, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, so yeah, just let us know if you have questions, and we'll do our best. I do. Okay. Um, okay, sure. Is there a reason why this um, pre-made unit can't be um, 10 feet from the property line? Uh, well, it's 16, 10 foot, it's a 50 foot lot. Mm -hmm. 10 foot from the line, that brings you down to 40. The, it will, it's 16 foot, a double container, then an 8 foot restroom container. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there will be no place to stand outside. And I'm sorry, when you said the 10 foot is, I get a little confused. Is that back from a rain? Yeah, on the or north from the side. side. The north side. Yeah. Oh, the, the north river. side. Right. Oh. So my question is, why why can't you <clears throat> shift that six feet well, uh, further it, to the and south? The other the other thing is, if you look on the plat, mm -hmm. it's at an angle mm -hmm. and. We're I very wish, scrunched. <laughs> I wish I could figure out how to bend that thing, but I can't. Um, <clears throat> it, it takes up, well, on the north side, it's approximately 12 foot of an angle from, from right off of Moraine. Mm -hmm. So that's 12 foot gone already. Mm -hmm. And then you have your setbacks, 10 foot. That's, oh, thank you. that's 22 foot. Right. Um, and the lot is 50. Okay. I mean, it just, it does mm -hmm. not fit. Yeah, and we've all. <clears throat> we, had, we had originally, we wanted the long end of the container against Moraine. Uh, the city mm -hmm. requested that we turn it the way we turned it. Mm -hmm. And we did it and made it work out. Uh, so this is upon okay. the request of the city. Yeah. All right. And it's not our. You know, it's not our first design that we'd like, but you know, you got to be flexible and and adjust. Mm -hmm. um, so this was the way we could adjust um, and live with that angled property line on the north. Do you um, have an idea of how what the distance is between the container and the office slash um, restroom container is? Uh, yeah, that's about twelve feet, 11, I think. Yeah. Feet. Okay. Yeah, right. and the plan is, um, you know, to have, we'll have outdoor TVs uh, from the bathroom side of the wall that's facing the bar container, and so we should be able to have a couple of outdoor 
you know, tables and chairs for seating okay. uh, there in that area. Okay. Um, yeah, and, you know, it's a commercial downtown. That's how it's zoned. That's how it was zoned when we purchased it. Mm -hmm. uh, we had understood that there were already zero setbacks on the side uh, because if it's commercial property, it is <coughs> zero setbacks. Mm -hmm. um, and then later, as we go were going through the process, we learned about the single family mm -hmm. uh, caveat, I don't know. Yeah. Um, exception. Exception, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. thank you. Um, and like I said, that's not a problem to the south of us since that's commercial. Mm -hmm. And eventually it won't be a problem to the north because they've applied for their short-term rental license as well. Okay. So, yeah, anyway. I have a question. <clears throat> I have two questions. Yes. Number one, from the sidewalk along Bahrain, is it just level from there over 10 to the seating area? It, it will be, yeah. We, we have to grade that. But yes, that is <clears throat> the plan. Yeah, so the when you looked at the... Con no, they're going to raise this okay. up. And then they're yeah, thank you. If you look at the... Uh, oh, I guess you can see up yeah. here. Yeah. Um, so Moraine's on the le left, and you'll be able to walk directly from Moraine uh, over a short catwalk onto uh, the mezzanine or the rooftop deck. And then we will have stairs down. We will have a lift for handicap. A wheelchair lift. And uh, so that shouldn't be an issue in Harris County also. I have another question. Yes. yes. You know, it appears to me that having a shipping container uh, is, that doesn't fit with the town. It just seemed like that could, could be an industrial area or something like that. So. What could be done to camouflage the sites to look more like a building rather than a shipping container? Um, we actually thought about that earlier um, well, well, on putting siding on, but kind of, you know, we, no, we've got lines that go this way. If we put siding on it, we'll have lines <laughs> go this way. So kind of what's yeah. the point? But I think you'll be surprised yeah. at how aesthetically pleasing it will be. Um, and I'm hearing a little scoffing, but we really can make it nice. Because um, uh, <laughs> this is a huge investment for us. Yeah. Um, and a shipping container is how we could build this uh, economically and efficiently. Um, we're doing all the painting ourselves. Uh, it's going to be kind of a dark reddish color with gray trims. We are a sports bar. Terry was a professional baseball player. Bogies is actually what his nickname was when he played ball. Um, so it's kind of a labor of love <coughs> from his family to him on um, just recognizing such an important part of his life. But I'll, I'll back up and say, obviously we are doing, we will do everything we can to make it aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. And then I would also say, you know, I don't know what the setbacks have to do with how a shipping container looks. Mm -hmm. It's just my question. Okay. Well, I recognize, too, that there is a shipping container across the street mm -hmm. over there, too. Yep. It also looks out of place. But I'm so sorry? That's reason I know there's a shipping container across the street uh -huh. and my thing's on. But it also looks out of place. So it just seems to me that it sure needs to not look like a shipping container. That's my concern. Um, that's your opinion. And that's why okay, you're there. it's a concern. <laughs> yep. I'm just not really sure. We haven't come prepared with conceptual drawings or artistic drawings or architectural how the whole lot is going to look. So this is a very yeah, of, you know, because right. we're here to talk about. So the we setbacks. really don't have yeah. um, that before us about the design of it. Yeah. Mr. Chair. We're happy to bring bring that to the appropriate meeting and discuss. Sure. Absolutely. Right. Mr. Chair, I apologize. I don't mean to interject here, but I do just want to point out that the design of the structure, um, even dictated in our code, we have very, very few standards. And so if that's something that the board would like to take up at a later date, when we start to look at the development code update, that's definitely grounds for us to examine that. Um, but I just want to note that that's not a part of this application request, and our development code is largely silent to design. Okay. Thank you. 
Of or, course. Okay. But it, again, when the time comes, we got lots of photos. <laughs> So is there anybody in the audience that would like to make comment? Thank you. You state your name and address, please. My name is Mark Newman. I'm at uh, owner of 253 West Riverside and 250 Moraine. Um, I'd like to first note that uh, in their original notes, I think it was from Beck, they had mentioned that we did not have a setback, but uh, our, uh, our massage business on the top on Moraine there does actually have a setback off of Moraine. Um, so I think there is some precedence for a setback there, where I know they're asking for a variance there. But um, what, what I guess what I would also like to know is when I was just hearing there, it was about short-term rentals are considered a commercial property, or is it a residence? Because I know it's taxed as a residence and seems like it's considered a residence by the IRS and others and I'm just kind of curious about that. Is that really truly the case because it's a residential home or is it is it a residence or is it commercial? I would have to defer to the town attorney for that. Okay. Thank you Chair Moreau. It's a great question and it's confusing because it's referred to differently in different contexts. Clearly, a vacation home is defined as a dwelling. There's no way around the fact that it is a dwelling. However, it is differentiated in our code between a vacation home being an accommodation use versus household living being a residential use. So the nomenclature does get confusing, but in this case, the way that it's been interpreted by the Community Development Department, and I support that, is that this, that a vacation home for the purposes of this variance request is an accommodations use and not a single family residential use. So if those homes don't use it as a short term rental, but they use it as their residence, even if it's their summer residence or their winter residence, whatever, then it's the residence, correct? So then it would, the variance would, or, or the 10 foot setback would have to be, um, honored, correct? So, Mr. Chair, I wouldn't want to get into too many hypotheticals, and I would definitely want the conversation to be with you and not become a Q&A on things that are not within this application. But uh, all that is to say that if there is a change in use, a bona fide change in use of a dwelling, then we would look back at the code at the time that that happens and at the time that building permits are requested. But that is not within the scope of this application. Because it's at the time of application. Because there is a variance requested from a single, th this application is for a variance from a single family use. If that were to not be a single family use any longer, then the variance would simply be unnecessary, but they would still be able to build under the normal requirements for that zoning district. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to get clarity here on some of these things. It's a little confusing to me. Um, but uh, I, I have a lot of experience in food and beverage and restaurants, um, and, and so this particular property or this, the, the use of this property and being set um, that much closer to my property is of, of great concern to me from a noise perspective. Um, I've uh, been in the restaurant business for about 30 years. I oversee about $300 million a year in average food and beverage sales around the country. So I'm very, very familiar with the uh, the goings on of a food and beverage establishment such as this. Um, and my concern is the alteration to the character of, of the, the area, very similar to kind of what, what you mentioned from the container perspective and just the, uh, this area was originally, as I've always known it since we've owned this property, which is many, many years now, is that this area was known as an arts artisan and crafts district. Or, or area, and that was part of the original intent of the area. And I don't see this fitting in from a, an aesthetic perspective, which I know is something different than the variance. But I just wanted to note that, that I see that as a concern and a detriment, though, because of that to my, my investment in the property. I also, I'm very concerned about the noise corridor coming down through there with the, the second story. I don't see anything for with, you know, Foods, from a food service perspective, I don't see anything from um, uh, from service standards or of, of uh, wait stations and various things like that where there's um, oversight 
um, on that top area where there's a lot of seating on, on the moraine level there, I guess you'd call it, where the noise is going to carry right down to our place. Right now I have it housed by a, um, a teacher, and before that I had another teacher in town that have lived there. I'm very concerned about their desire to stay after this goes in and some of their, some of their concerns because it's just going to be outdoor TVs and people drinking and hanging out. I'm seeing no, I'm seeing pretzels and 7-Eleven hot dogs as being the only food. So I'm concerned about this being basically a, a place to drink and, and that being it. Um, and that effect on our neighborhood. So I see it as a total detriment there from, and also from trash. I haven't really seen anything that really, in the plans that really address both keg storage and trash. Um, enclosures and various things like that that are prominent and, and, a, and always an issue with a, uh, a bar or a food and beverage establishment. So I worry about that. I worry about that. It's going to affect my property values. Um, I also worry a lot about um, how this was originally listed as having the ability to build to a lot line. Yet, obviously, we're here in a meeting that's stating that that obviously wasn't the case. So I feel bad for the, these people who just mentioned that they bought this with that understanding, and now here they are having to ask for a variance. So I feel bad, but at the same time, I also have to protect my investment and also the character of our neighborhood that I've lived in for 30-some years. So I'm, I'm really concerned on, on that level, um, on the impact. I don't see anything on, again, you know, grease traps and how the food program is handled. And I worry about these types of things because I've seen this too many times and I've experienced it many times where a food and beverage program goes in at a minimum level and then as soon as it doesn't work and as soon as the, it, it's not resonating with the guests and everything else, it starts to morph and it starts to change. And then how does that affect my neighbors and my, my tenants? And I'm really concerned about that. Um, I also was just a little concerned about the fact that I don't understand where the town's thoughts are on this, and so I'm not kind of asking this question in the sense that two bedrooms were taken down, no bedrooms are being rebuilt. We're in a town that needs housing. We, I house people who are, you know, work in the community, and why aren't we making this into more of a mixed-use kind of a situation? Why aren't we really focusing on that when we have an area like this that has a chance to be redeveloped and really to be enhanced by the park. We were across the street. This bar is across the street from a playground. And <laughs> we're just going to put in containers and start sloshing out alcohol. And we have a chance to build mixed use and to rebuild two new bedrooms here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really just kind of hoping that the town sees that and doesn't, A, doesn't allow this variance, which is the only thing we're talking about, I realize but really starts to consider this as this whole area starts to get redeveloped with the loop and everything. So okay. those, those are my comments. Right. Thank you very much. It may be, uh, it may be something to bring up to other boards uh, about what those uses are. Um, we are in the process of redoing uses, potentially, uh, in the town. So uh, you may want to investigate that because we really don't have the authority of what goes there as long as it's within the... Uh, right of use, you know, for the zoning that's currently in understood. Place. Yeah. Understood. Sorry, just got Thank going you. though. <laughs> I appreciate that. Though. Yep. Anybody else like to make a comment? Me. <clears throat> Morning. Morning. I'm Joe Laddick. I'm the owner of 286 Marine Avenue, and uh, where's that in relation to this? Pardon me? Where is that in relation to this? And I'm the neighbor. Uh, north or south? On the south. Okay. Okay. So I have uh, <clears throat> prepared this for this meeting. As of 5-1-2023, a permit has not been issued for construction of this project at 281 Moraine Avenue. I have withdrawn my short-term rental license for 286 Moraine Avenue. There can be no misunderstanding that my house and setbacks are for single-family use. The zero lot line setback cannot be considered given the description found in the code. In fact, a permit as yet has not been issued for this project. See notes to table 4-5, number 11. In my estimation, the lot does not possess any special circumstances given the nature of the area. Retaining walls are commonplace 
and setback issues have been met all along the common side of the retaining wall of Moraine Avenue. The real hardships have been put on myself and the neighbor to the north. With a disregard for our rights and quality of life, the Connex bar staring at me from the entrance of my house is hardly a pleasing sight. Both parties are considered residential in use and defined by the county assessors. The zero lot line and placement of the Connex on the west boundary right up to the lot line gains the owner more square footage when considering the bar Connex, but completely ignores the fragile condition of the rubble retaining wall, which has already been compromised by excavation below the existing footings on the public right of way. This condition is dangerous given a rain event and shows little regard for the safety of others. The town already has seven alcohol adult businesses all in the block area, both Throttle, The, bar, the Barrel, Molly B's, The Thai Restaurant, Estes Park Liquors, The Snowy Mountain Win Winery, The Rock Cut. Why do we need another one across from the park? The area is saturated, I believe. A month ago, I received an emergency call from my property manager saying, the neighbor was tearing down my fence and taking it away. This go ahead and do what you please and ask for forgiveness later holds everyone to an unfair standard. The proposed zero lot line build puts a con <coughs> connex right up to my lot line and an outhouse because I'm not sure these plans remain annoyingly incomplete. I've owned this property since 1994. The Snowy Mountain Winery used to be Graves Gas. Both properties have been there since 1905. Terry tore down the existing house to ask for a variance to build lot line to lot line. My use of property hasn't changed, and there's no reason for me to lose my civil freedoms that I've enjoyed on this non-conforming property since I owned it. So why a zero lot line build except to encroach on my civil rights afforded <clears throat> me by the ownership of this property? The Connex Bar is the cheapest example of a bar on the market. Totally out of sync with the development plan for the area, it's a metal container, nothing architecturally satisfying to the eye. So for the anticipated profit for what it's in for, for the people who have, <coughs> who have to put it up with the added noise and, and drunks who will occasionally end up in the park, sound, visual, crowd control, extended to the lot line? I don't think so. <coughs> The owner, in my estimation, does not need a variance to build on this lot. I question why the owner is trying to fit a 40-foot connex end-to-end on the lot when there are obviously so many options afforded by the supplier, Roxbox. With seven drinking and alcohol establishments, it seems questionable to expect profits to increase for everyone in the area given the added alcohol density. The benefits of Baldwin Park are obvious. It's a buffer for the noise people have to put up with all day. It's a place of peace and relaxation. The crowd is there to relax, not to carry on with a beer and a gummy because they are legal in Colorado. Other Colorado communities have capitalized on their historical communities. We can do better than a 40-foot container ban in a residential neighborhood. Thank you for listening. Absolutely. Thank you. Did you say Thank that you, you have um, um, canceled your uh, vacation rental license on that? Yes. Property? Okay. Yes, I have. All right. Just for clarity's sake. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? State your name and address. Yeah, my name is David. I live on the, uh, I own the property north on 271 West Riverside. Um, just a couple quick thoughts on it. Um, it's in the previous part that was brought up about at the time of application, they were taking regard as to how it was, um, whether it was long term or short term. At the time of application, it was long term. I only applied April 10th um, for the short term rental. Mm -hmm. uh, and secondly, as far as 
It said there'd be no known detriment to the north or southern properties. Um, I don't believe that at all because basically you're painting us into a corner to have short-term rental there um, for good. And if we ever go to resell the property, it's not like they can ask them to take the shipping containers down to redo it as a, a long-term again. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Bureau Mayo and I'd like to address some of Mr. Newman's uh, comments. First of all, originally, this was proposed to be from uh, the large building by the post office all the way down to the winery as one development. And it would have been commercial on Moraine. And there would have been employee housing as well as short-term rentals. And <clears throat> I live at 265 Lookout Street. Nobody asked me about the barrel when it went in or the full throttle. And the biggest one that we have is Performance Park. You get lots of noise, lots of other stuff. And it's just part of Estes Park. My house is zoned uh, E half acre estate. The properties that we're talking about here today are zoned downtown commercial. So if my house was zoned downtown commercial, I would know eventually something's going to happen. Historically, Judy Lammy, and Wayne's probably the only one that knows Judy here in the audience. But Judy was a very benevolent person. And she purchased the two red cabins. And then her friend Barb Marshall purchased the one uh, to the north. And they were using that for uh, affordable housing for the community, which they did. Uh, Judy passed away. Her son asked me to sell her two properties, which I did. Sold one to the Abbots, and I sold one to Ryan Wells. Ryan Wells is one of the partners in the Alvarado uh, development, which is where Jimmy Johns and the uh, uh, hospital has their stuff. It was Ryan's intention to develop that whole area. I had talked to Mr. Lydeck about the purchase of his home, and he said, yeah, I'll sell it. And then he later said, well, I, you know, I need more money. They said, fine, we'll pay you more money. I said, yeah, well, you know, I just decided maybe I'm not going to sell it at all. The first uh, satellite map that you have, I don't know, I've lived in this town 32 years now, and I've driven by the post office as many times as Jeff has and Wayne. And everybody thought that the fence lines were the property lines. And when you looked at the survey, which I think I have a survey there, it showed a corrected property line, which was the fence lines. However, nobody ever seemed to have that flat uh, recorded with the county. When Barb Marshall redid hers, which you can see on... I think that's the number 292. She did correct it uh, on her replat, and she did give the Abbots and then the last gentleman that spoke their 14 feet triangle. So they got theirs, but the rest of it wasn't, uh, the replat wasn't filed. So until Terry Bogner did a survey, nobody even knew. Everybody thought the fence lines were where the fence lines were. Downtown commercials, downtown commercial. Uh, I think Mr. Lydeck's removal of his short-term rental permit is a little uh, interesting, especially when we tried to buy his property twice at his agreed price. So anyway, I think the uh, Bogner should be allowed to build what they intended to build. Uh, until Terry did the survey, nobody knew that the property lines were different than what they were. Uh, it is zoned downtown commercial at the time of the um, application. Uh, Joe did have a short-term vacation rental permit, and there's nothing to stop him from doing it again because it's a right by zoning. And I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else? Hello. Hi. My name is Durango Kelly Steele. Um, I own 251 West Riverside Drive. Mm -hmm. 
I have owned it since 1978. Um, first property I ever bought when I was 20 years old. Um, we have since, um, it is a residential property and um, we do have a vacation rental license. But this house has been the house that we completely restored within the character of what we believe um, that West Riverside could be with the artisan community and across the street from the park. I am uh, opposed to granting this variance request for a lot of the reasons you've already heard. Um, and also I agree with David, a uh, new owner of 271, that we as homeowners in Estes Park, just as every other business in this town, we figure out how to make it work to live here. That's it's a privilege to live in Estes Park. And I have long-term rented that property. I have lived in it myself. My two daughters were born there, not in the house, but, <laughs> but um, so the whole area um, has very special meaning to me and I really wanna honor the 10 foot setbacks that are currently in the code that I depended on to spend the money to not only invest there, but also to renovate and to make um, something special on West Riverside Drive. Um, I, the noise will not only affect West Riverside Drive, but also East Riverside Drive is all residential. So um, <coughs> it's, so, um, I know a lot of it has been already said, but this will drastically change the character of the neighborhood, drastically. Um, to have a bar that operates till 2 a.m. next to residential properties, whether they're um, a short-term rental or somebody rents it for three months, like is traditional what we used to do back in the 30s and 40s and 50s, that's what Estes Park was known as, as summer residence. Now, uh, it went, it went up drastically in the summer for our residential proper, um, population and down in the winter. <laughs> so um, anyways, I'm um, particularly passionate about this because I, I, I love the area and um, I truly do hope that we take into consideration the impact on the entire little valley between moraine and how it reverberates the sound from the mountain it just bounces right back and so thank you for your consideration and i'm also against not only the 10 foot but this zero lot line on moraine um you know the winery sits back uh the moraine 250 moraine sits back from it so there there's already setbacks from moraine so that you don't have a zero right to the sidewalk so people can, um, I'm, I'm against that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> Anything we want to discuss? Specifically, what is it you have to go to and do your code review and all the neighbors you know State your name and address. Are you going to? Thank you. My name is Paul Brown. I live at 254 Solomon Drive, Estes Park, Colorado. Um, I requested the Board of Adjustment deny the 
approval of the owner applicant's request for variances to eliminate the eight foot setback along Moraine Avenue and the 10 foot setback at 281 West Riverside Drive, formerly uh, 281 Moraine Avenue as requested in the commercial downtown zone district under section 4.4C.4 of the Estes Valley Development Code. Um, the staff findings under variance description on page two of the memorandum state that the property to the south and the subject property 286 Moraine Avenue is used as a short-term rental and is considered a commercial use. Therefore, the zero side setback along the south property line permitted in the Estes Park Development Code is not subject to this variance request and the property to the north of the subject property to 71 West Riverside Drive currently has a pending vacation uh, home license application under review at the town clerk office. Counter arguments, both properties 286 Moraine Avenue and 271 West Riverside Drive are listed as single family uh, residents by the Larimer County Assessor. To the Colorado Court of Appeals, Section 2015COA115 found that a short term rental vacation home constitutes a residential, not a commercial use of the property. The court concluded all commercial buildings are inspected for compliance for a commercial use under the International Building Code not the International Residential Code, which is used to inspect the vacation home. The town of Estes Park currently follows this policy and inspects vacation homes for compliance with the 2015 International Residential Code. Conclusion, the single family dwelling slash vacation home at either 286 Moraine Avenue or 271 West Riverside is not a commercial use or commercial building, and the 10-foot side setback at 251 West Riverside, um, formerly 281 Moraine Avenue is still required. Uh, variant standards for review, the staff finding standard one a uh, special condition exists due to the typography of the west side of the uh, property, Moraine Avenue. There is a retaining wall with a 10 foot to 12 foot vertical uh, drop in elevation by allowing the zero front um, setback. The proposed shipping container bar can be positioned near the retaining wall so that the mezzanine can be directly accessed from the sidewalk of Moraine Avenue. Before putting up <clears throat> counter arguments, the following issue need to be addressed. And I like to go look at the pictures that I gave you. Mm -hmm. The historic rubble wall with randomly placed concrete piers along the east side of Moraine Avenue and the re and retains a sidewalk and a uh, roadway. It is not an engineered structure. Uh, a portion of the retaining wall collapsed during the September 2013 flood event, and you see that in the first picture. The second picture shows the face of the rubble retaining wall and the concrete piers at 251 West Riverside Drive, formerly 281 Moraine Avenue. The picture also shows a three foot deep hole and a two before structure in it. 
Picture three shows the side view of the rebel retaining wall and the concrete piers, the hole, and the two before structure. Between the wall and the two before structure can be seen a string line which is placed along the west property line. Notice the hole was dug well beyond the string line into the right of way of the string line. Picture four looks down from the top of the rubble wall into the hole west of the string line in the right of way. It shows the hole undercutting the rubble retaining wall and it also shows a second hole below the concrete pier. This hole undercuts the base footing of the pier. This is a very serious matter which weaken the rubble wall structure. If there is a wall failure, it could cause damage along the length of the wall on adjoining properties, including the sidewalk and the roadway. The town of Estes Park and CDOT should be notified immediately before any excavation work or repairs are done in the right of way. Keep in mind section 4.4.C.1 density and dimensional standards Site specific conditions may limit, may further limit development on a site. Counter arguments. The owner applicant has not shown on the sketch pan or any, any typography information, including grade elevations that uh, substantiate the claim special conditions or evidence of the approved access or evidence of an approved access agreement from the town or CDOT to the sidewalk. The technical drawing sheet from Rock's Box requires a frost protective footing and foundation for the proposed shipping container but no technical detail has been provided showing this uh, foundation would not affect the integrity of the existing uh, rubble retaining wall or cross into the right of way. The conclusion, no setback variance along the west property line uh, should be allowed because of technical gift qualities that may affect the existing retaining wall. Um, in staff finding standard number seven, it says if the variance is granted, the staff would like to condition the owner to provide privacy fence between the properties to the north and the south for noise and security screening and to condition the screening for all uh, garbage receptacles. Counter argument is that these should be required uh, regardless of whether there's a variance approved or not. This is, this is not the board in which to... Pardon? This is not the board in which we would discuss these matters or we're just, uh, we're just okay. requesting, um, you know, setback variance, not, not construction or detrimental conditions on the property uh, because that's not before us today. Okay. Then that concludes what I'd like to say. All right. Thank you. Just to clarify, he's correct about the digging out of the wall, but the city did that. Okay. Um, there was an old line, water line, in the middle moraine come across our property, and it was still being used and shouldn't have been, and I've got the water in that picture. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, the city did that. Okay. And left it. Right. So. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, hearing none. Oh. Mr. Chair, I would just have to advise, you know, this is up to you, it's your decision. 
but if we start allowing repeat comments by members of the audience, uh, this could okay, evolve quickly. Okay, that's okay. I've said. Thank you. <laughs> Any new comments from anybody? Okay, hearing none. All right, well, let me say something first. Okay. Given my experience uh, in construction and development, I would think that there is uh, a way to uh, make beneficial use of this lot um, without granting a variance. Um, given the character of the neighborhood prior to rezoning, I believe, in 2000, um, it was not... Um, was not commercial, but obviously they they changed the zoning here uh, in 2000, I believe. Um, so, if we do not grant a variance today, um, the owners of this property are well within their right, I believe, to um, use this property within the codes. So, this property could still have these kind of things on it. Um, not before this board, uh, of course, but um, without a variance, if they can do something um, that's within their right to do so. Um, that's it from me. Um, would you like to make a motion? Mm -hmm. I move that the motion. Oh, your microphone is not. I move the motion be denied for these two reasons. For all the reasons that Jess just stated, Plus, from all the reasons that all the citizen neighbors have also expressed, I move that be denied. I'll second that. Can I have your vote? We can't use that. We're just going to say it out loud. I vote that we deny, deny. Um, this variance. Okay. So the variance has been denied. You have reports or discussion items? No, I don't at this moment, Chair. Thank you. All right, thank you. Chair, are you adjourning the meeting? You may need to actually officially um, do if so. If we're not having any reports or discussion items, meeting is adjourned. Okay.